Hi, I am Albert Barkey from ASVXL.com. In today's video, we are going to delve into the topic of run rate. In business, run rate typically refers to company's financial performance. But what exactly does run rate mean? Simply put, run rate is the estimate of future financial performance based on the current performance over a shorter time period. In this video, we have uh, prepared a formula, uh, a general run rate formula that is not using any extra assumptions. And according to this formula, run rate equals period to date revenue divided by days that are already passed multiplied by number of days in the entire period. And um, we have an example as well. So today is August 19th 2023 and um, we have a data revenue data for the first full 18 days in 18 calendar days of august and um, the revenue for the first 18 days was 20 million us dollars number of days that are already passed was 18 and the number of days in whole august is 31 so what is the run rate for august it's 34.44 million us dollars so you can see how a very simple calculation can give us an idea of how our month uh, is going to end in terms of revenue now a run rate can be calculated not only for a month but for a longer time periods as well for for a quarter for a year, for a decade, and even for 100 years. So it's uh, the choice is up to you. Uh, for the sake of this video, I have prepared a template that helps us to calculate run rate for month, quarter, or a year. So here's this template. And by the way, I will leave a link below this video so you can download this template if you want to use it later on. So we'll have to fill gold fields only so today's date is 19 of august we can change that if we want but uh, i will not do it in this video now the basis for run rate calculation uh, we can choose calendar days or networking days i think that calendar days are just fine for doing it so i will leave it as calendar days now let's select a year it's 2023 and now the period for run rate calculation it can be a month a quarter or a year we'll choose a month for, at first and the month is august so as in the previous example we have 31 days in the, in august 18 days are already passed and now let's check whether this template is uh, working fine so 20 million uh, we have made 20 million dollar dollars of revenue already in 20 days and the actual run rate is 34.44 everything is fine now um, when i personally want to give a best estimate to how the period is going to end i usually i'm planning for a demand change so generally a demand in the second half of the month tends to drop but that's not always the case so in order to give the in order to give the best possible expected uh, run rate i would uh, also take change in demand as an additional uh, assumption for for calculation so in this case let's let's suppose that during the last 13 calendar days of the of this month we will we'll encounter a drop in demand of 10 percent if that will be the case the actual run rate is 33 million us dollars so it's not 34.44 anymore it's 33. now let's see how it compares to our budget and to our uh, result of the previous year so in this case our actual run rate 
is 3% over budget and 24% over uh, previous year actual, which is quite good. We are doing well, uh, well over our plan and our last year's result. At the present moment, where we have 18 calendar days passed, we have uh, a result that is 38% behind the budget and 25% behind previous year actual. So that is also a thing to consider. Now let's see what our result would be if we would use networking days instead of calendar days as a basis of our cal calculation. As you can see, with uh, by using networking days, our result is slightly different. Our run rate has dropped from 33 to 31.57 million, and thus we are falling behind budget and our run rate is not so great anymore as compared to previous year, year actual. So it's up to you to decide whether to use networking days or calendar days. And by the way, if you are certain that you want to use networking days, then in this sheet background data, you can add holiday dates uh, to, to the column G, uh, which will affect uh, the networking days amount. So the more holidays, especially public holidays where uh, the businesses are not supposed or not allowed to work uh, in different countries, the, these are the different dates. So by adding those holidays, public holidays to column G, you will get even more precise uh, number in the end. But I would stick to calendar days. That's the easiest option. Now let's do one more example calculation. So the selected run rate period in this case will be a quarter. And it's August, so we are in the third quarter, which will end at September 30th. So third quarter started in uh, on July 1st. Today is 19th, but we are taking the uh, revenue numbers until August 18th. So during in the third quarter, we have 92 calendar days and out of these 92 days, 49 are passed. So if our uh, actual revenue for 40, 49 days was 60 million, and the budget for the third quarter was 120 while previous year actual was 100 million then yeah we are getting run rate based on these numbers for for our quarter and here we are not um, not adding any assumptions for demand change however if we did it let, let's say we expect that the remaining days of third quarter uh, will have a demand shift uh, of 15%, then we will uh, we will basically meet our budget expectations. However, if the growth will be less than 15%, then our budget uh, expectations will not be met. Now we have reached the final example for today. And actually it happens to be my favorite one. So select run rate period, we'll choose a year. And you can see that total days in this period and days passed in this period have changed. This is because uh, there is a 30, 365 days in a year. And from January 1st until August 18th, we have 230 calendar days passed. Now let's enter some numbers into this template. So let's suppose that our period to date sales revenue is 200 million. Uh, expected demand change zero, budget 240 million dollars uh, for the whole 2023, and previous year actual was 210 million US dollars. With these numbers, we are doing really, really well. So we can expect uh, to be 32% over budget by the end of the year and 51% over last year's result. Now let's imagine that actually our business consists of two main 
uh, product categories. The first one would be summer clothing. And another one would be winter clothing. So I am inserting a new row and let's type winter clothing into it. Now, um, today is August 19th. So the summer is going to end really, really soon. We have less than two weeks left before the end of the summer. So we are expecting since today, let's suppose that we are expecting a demand change of minus 80% until end of the year for the summer clothing. So people will not buy that much summer clothing anymore. And let's enter that. We think that demand will drop by 80% for the end of the year. With these numbers, we can see that our run rate is not overperforming budget anymore. Uh, let's suppose that our winter clothing is has sold already for 150 million. Then our budget for 2023 for winter clothing is 260 million. And previous year, during the previous year, we have sold for 240 million. Now, since we have November, which is not a winter month, but still a cold month, November and December ahead of us, we can expect a demand rise for winter clothing. So let's, let's suppose that we are expecting the demand to rise by 30%. That way we're expecting to overperform uh, by the end of the year as compared to the budget and overperform the previous year's actual result. Now the row 17, I want to demonstrate to you that it's uh, quite a useful row. So it sums up our product categories. So 350 million is our total. Then it, then it calculates the weighted average for expected demand change, which is minus 33%. It sums up the values of run rate actual, of budget, and values of previous year actual. And uh, with the percentage values, it, it calculates again the weighted average values for them. So according to our current calculations, by the end of the year, we are expecting underperforming by 2% compared to budget. But at the same time, we are, well, we are expecting overachieving the previous year's actual result by 8%. And nevertheless, if we think that we can push harder with, with sales, and let's say that we are expecting to the winter clothing to be even uh, higher in demand uh, during the remaining days of this calendar year, and we are expecting summer clothing to drop a little bit less significantly, let's say by 79%, then, or 70, maybe even 76%. Then, yeah, with these numbers, we'll still not achieve, not achieve our budget goal. The budget goal can be achieved with, uh, with other assumptions. But it's up to you what assumptions to use and to uh, manipulate the data in order to model different scenarios. That's it. We have covered the run rate topic. If you need a template demonstrated in this video, go to the video description. If you found this video valuable, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet and see you in the next video.